so happy that you chose to join us again today for our Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come now asking as always that you would just enter into our hearts and our minds and help us to receive your word afresh. We come as empty vessels asking that you would fill us up so much so that we will spill over onto the world in which we encounter. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are still on article number 12, the harmony of the law and the gospel. And our author writes, we believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government, that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin. To deliver them from which, and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law, is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. So today, our scripture will come from Galatians, the third chapter, verse 21. But you know how we do it. We read, we'll read above the verse and below the verse. In fact, actually, I would like to read the whole chapter. Don't get worried. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I know there's no time and I know that our attention span just will not stand for it. So, I'll read verses 19 through 25 uh, from the NIV version. So, Romans, uh, not Romans, Galatians, the third chapter, 19 through 25, which reads, What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions unto the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was put into effect through angels by a mediator. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And verse 25, now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. So to get a grasp of, of Paul's teaching in Galatians on the law and grace, I think it would help to understand why the book was written in the first place. One of the first things that when you're reading the, the book of Galatians, you know, the first chapter, verse 1, one of the first things that stands out with this letter is that is different from Paul's other letters is the lack of pleasantries, even from the first verse. You know, Paul jumps right into making his point. No, you know, he normally would be thanking God for uh, every, you know, every time he'd think of them or, but no, no commending them for their great faith in the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. None of his usual affections toward the church or individuals in the church. He is blunt and to the point, even starting in the first verse. We get that. When, when, when you're mad or, and when you're confronting a person about a wrongdoing, 
most of us don't waste time with a lot of pleasantries. You know, we don't go up, hey, how you doing? How you feel? How's your mama? How's the family? No, we don't do any of that. From the beginning, we come on with it. Paul writes this letter under heavy stress and strain. As in the case even today, there will always be naysayers when a good work is being done. The gospel had changed Paul's life and through his teachings, it had also changed the lives of other people. And now the gospel is being attacked and Paul was out to defend the truth of the gospel. So the letters to the church of Galatia was from Paul a call to a battle for truth for the truth of the gospel and the freedom of the Christian church. The church in Galatia had been infiltrated by a group of false teachers. They were spreading a fake gospel, which was a mixture of the law and grace. And knowing this, Paul was not going to stand by and do nothing. They attacked Paul's authority as, a, as an apostle, saying that he hadn't been called. They're like, no, nah, you weren't called. And, and they attacked his teachings, saying, because Paul was saying that faith alone was enough to, be, to save you. And, 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 and this group who were called the Judaizers, they were saying, no, that wasn't enough. And so they were, the Judaizers were a legalistic Jewish party that was within the early church. And, and they tried to combine Christ's message of salvation with the Mosaic law. In other words, they were saying that the gospel was just an add-on to the law, that it, it didn't stand by itself. It, it needed the law and then the gospel. It was just an add-on. They were teaching that justification did not come by faith alone, but that it was also necessary for the Gentiles to keep all of the laws given by Moses. And, and, and the, the main one that they were really hot over was that of being circumcised. In essence, they were saying that in order for the Gentiles to be saved, they had to become Jews by being circumcised, and then they had to uh, obey all of their laws. They were putting a burden on the Gentiles that they, they themselves could not do. They didn't obey all of the Mosaic laws. Nobody could. That, you know, that's the freedom of the gospel, which is by faith. And, and, and it's like they were doing away with the freedom that came with the gospel and putting a heavy yoke. They were putting people back in bondage. They were taking the, the Gentiles out of the world and, and putting them in the bondage of, of, of the Jewish law. And, and so Paul wasted no time in reprimanding the church. In verse 6 and 7 of Galatians, the first chapter, he says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of, of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, remember in our previous lessons, we talked about what astonished Jesus. Now we see what astonished Paul. It, it was the fact of, uh, that how quickly they deserted the grace of Christ. Paul had spent quite a bit of time in Galatia teaching and preaching. In fact, Acts the 11th chapter, verse 26, tells us that Paul and Barnabas spent a whole year with the church and taught a lot of folk. And yet, when he left, and, and folk came in teaching, folk from the outside came in teaching something different. They turned from the truth that he had taught them and started believing lies. 
the fact that it was necessary for Paul to write with such force, that lets us know that those putting the false teaching, uh, uh, those pushing the false teaching had achieved a foothold in the church. They were tearing up the church. And, 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 and that's the thing about a lie or misinformation. It's like once it's introduced and people take hold of its truth, take hold of it as truth, it, it takes a long time to eradicate it. A, a lot of people would rather believe a lie than to believe the truth. That That's what we're dealing with in our day and time. So th this is another uh, evidence of how current the gospel is. Uh, why is it that a lie is easier to believe than the truth? A lie sprinkled with just a little truth can take a lot of folk down. And if it, not, if it were not for the grace of God, it would get us all. Paul knew that if these men were allowed to add rituals and rules to the gospel, then what would happen is the focus would be more on the rituals and not on Jesus for salvation. And that would make the gospel pointless. So Paul was not just fighting for the church of Galatia. He was fighting for the future of the church as well. He was fighting for us, for, for those of us who, would, who, who, who came after them and for those who will come even after us. Even in our times, we must be careful not to present uh, all of the stuff that we do, which by the way, has nothing to do with the gospel, but we must be careful not to present all that stuff as an add-on to the gospel. You know, telling folks, you can't wear this to the church. You can't do that. You can't, you know, you that all that stuff is putting a heavy yoke. All the annual days, all the selling of food, all the committees, all the newfangled things that we come up with just to attract the crowd. We got to be careful that we are not presenting this stuff to non-believers or to new converts or even to unlearned Christians. We got to be careful that we're not presenting all of this nothing stuff, all of this legalistic stuff as an add-on to the gospel. I think that one of the positive things about COVID, the COVID-19 epidemic that started in 2020 and, 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 and still going strong in 2021. I think one of the positive things uh, about it for the church is that it has eliminated a lot of the churchy stuff we were doing. Our worship services now ha has been stripped of all of the time wasters and, and, and we have been stripped down to the bare bone. We, we pretty much sing a congr uh, congregational hymn and, and then the gospel is preached. And, and after the gospel is preached, we go home. There, there's not a lot of, uh, of stuff before or after the gospel, which means that the gospel, the word of God is the focus. And I don't know about your churches, but at Mount Sinai, it's enough. It, it, the gospel, the, the word of God, it quenches the thirst. It satisfies the hunger and it builds the anticipation for the next worship service. It's as though the whole COVID experience has been a cleansing process for the church, cleansing process for the Sunday mornings and, 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 and the other times that we meet at church. It, it has, has cleansed us. It has let us know that all of that is not even necessary. The church doesn't even need it. And I pray that once it's over, once the COVID crisis, the COVID ep epidemic is over, I pray that we are not quick to return to what it used to be, which is, is the problem that Paul was dealing with in the Galatian church. Think of the freedom that we have enjoyed 
as a result of COVID in the church. The, the joy of coming together only for the word of God. And not for a lot of stuff. We don't even have enough time. We, we're not there enough time for stuff to be started. We're just there for the word. So Paul was preaching the gospel of grace alone. That grace, the, the gospel was enough. And nothing else needed to be added. And, and this was difficult for some of the Jews. Because most of them. If you were a, 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 a true Jewish person, especially a male, uh, you had been circumcised when, when you were eight days old, and you had been steeped in the law of Moses since childhood. And so when they accepted Christ, some just refused to forsake their Judaistic religion. They saw Christianity as only an extension of Judaism. In their mind, Christ had only added new teachings to their existing law and religion. So they, they were like, if you, if you as a non-Jew, as a Gentile, wanted to become or wanted to accept Christ, then they said, you had to become a Jew first, which meant being circumcised and, and then committing yourselves to the laws of Moses. And also they had to observe all of the ceremonies and the rituals of the Jewish religion. Then once a person had done all these things, which in essence had become Jewish, then and only then could they receive Christ and be baptized. Only then could they be accepted into the church according to the people that just couldn't accept the freedom that came with the gospel. So they were putting a heavy yoke on people that they themselves could not carry. The gospel is freedom from all such yokes. This was a big issue in first century church. And Paul and Barnabas had heated discussions with the folk that were spreading these lies. So much so that it was decided that Paul and Barnabas would leave Galatian and certain other, wherever they were, Paul and Barnabas and, and certain others would go up to Jerusalem, go back to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders there to find out what they had to say about this matter. In Acts, the 15th chapter, even the Jerusalem council had heated debates concerning the, how the Gentiles would be accepted. So this was a big issue. They wanted to know, would they have to follow the law or was the gospel enough? And, and finally, in Acts, the 15th chapter, verses 6 to 11, and this is the New King James Version, it says, Amongst, you know, they were having this heated discussion. And, and, and then in verse six says, now the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, heated conversations, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. So the gospel of Jesus Christ frees us from the yoke of the law. The book of Galatians deals with the mistaken thinking that salvation can be earned by keeping a set of rules. 
And it also deals with the fact that those who receive salvation must live by God's rule. Sounds like a contradiction. Hmm. Join us next time as we explore the harmony of the law and the gospel. Is it a contradiction? Is it not? Join us as we continue to study the harmony of the law and the gospel. And until then, bye-bye. See you next time and be blessed.